Good evening, brethren. Let me greet you in the name of Jesus. Before we continue with our lesson this evening, let us invite our Savior. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are inviting you this evening to be with us. We want to thank you for the privilege of listening to your word that you have prepared. We pray that you touch our brain cells and prepare our hearts to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture uh, reading comes to us from 1 Samuel chapter 15. We are going to study, to take a study through uh, the whole chapter, which talks about God's intervention in Israel uh, after they were attacked and fought by the Amalekites. Now, the climax of our lesson is on verse 22. In verse 23 and 22 says, So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? It's a question. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. This is where we are picking up our lesson title, which says, to obey is better than sacrifice. We should know as children of God that to obey the commandment of God, to keep the commandment of God, it is better than sacrificing whatever we have for his service. A story is told that God wanted to destroy the Amalekites and he appointed Saul as king. And the man who was behind the appointment was the prophet Samuel. And he gave him the instructions from God to say from today, you must only heed Listen to the word of God. God say to the voice of God. God says you must go and destroy the Amalekites. And you must utterly destroy them. Don't leave anything alive. But what did Saul do? Saul went and attacked the Amalekites. But he came back with Agag, who was the king. He saved him. Saul came back with the fatlings, he came back with the sheep, he came back with the oxen. He came back with those things that to him were of importance, were worth. But all the weaklings he destroyed, he utterly destroyed them. Now out of excitement and happiness that he has managed to do that, he left and went to Canaan to go and make a monument for himself. Now God said to Samuel, do you see what Saul has done? I regret why I made him a king. Imagine God regretting why he allowed, he appointed Saul as a king. And this thing grieved Samuel because he wasn't happy. Samuel went to look for, just briefly, he went to look for, for Saul. He did not find him because he had left for Camel. He went there, he found him there, and he said, what is it that you have done? And he said, in fact, he greeted him first and said, man of God, I have done what God wanted him to do. And so Samuel says, why is this bleating of the sheep and the lowing? Why, why is this noise that I hear? He was very shocked, but he said, the people have brought them. He denied that he was the one who was responsible. He said that the people have brought them. They have spared Agak. They have spared the sheep. They have spared the oxen. All of those things that they saw that they, 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 that they were good for them. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agak, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Just, just from this very same verse, there is something that God did not say he must do. 
He said he has done what he was supposed to do, but he broke a he brought back Amalek uh, uh, Agak as a king. So we are saying here, Saul denied that he did not do what God wanted him to do. He lied about uh, his people that they are the ones that brought in those things that were not supposed to be brought in. They did not utterly destroy it. Because in verse 21, he says, but the people took of the plunder, the sheep, the oxen, and the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. That is why he says to him, is the Lord, does the Lord delight in sacrifices or in burnt offerings? Brethren, we are the children of God. We have been anointed. We have accepted Christ as our, as our personal Savior. And there are so many commandments that God has given us that he wants us to keep. But many a times we do not keep them and we always have excuses for not doing. There are times where we blame our husbands. There are times where, the, where we blame our families. We blame our relationship. I cannot keep the Sabbath. I had to go there. I mean, she's my mother-in-law, she's my sister-in-law. I cannot return my tithe because I, I, I'm not married to an Adventist or he does not understand the issue of tithing. Or I'm just receiving a miega salary. All what I receive is what I am able to use to meet the needs of my family. And yet God has declared, when you go to Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, my spirit, when, when I was preparing for this sermon, he just, the spirit just kept on taking me, taking me to returning time, returning time to the service of the Lord. It says, Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, do not rob God in tithes and offerings. Because when you rob God in tithes and offerings, you are cursed. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse of the Lord, that there may be food or meat in my house. Try me. And see if I may not open the window of heaven. But what is happening today? What is happening today? We are giving out excuses. We are blaming certain people for our spiritual failures in our responsibilities. God is not interested in the sacrifices that you are giving when you are failing to obey. Tithe is very, very important. It, in fact, it does not belong to us. We are supposed to return what belongs to God. After returning what belongs to God, and we are supposed to offer from the abundance of what we have so that the work of God must be done. So that every, every program within the church, at whatever level, must be able to run. But today we are giving out excuses just like so. So we are able we are able to say my needs are more than what I have. And God says, try me. If we believe in this God, why can't we say, do what he says we must do? Why can't we try him and see if he will not open the windows of heaven? Brethren, let me tell you, when God speaks, we have to do. And we have to believe and we will receive. God does open the windows of heaven. God does pour us a blessing. Much enough to a level where we do not even have any room to give. Let us not find ourselves in a situation where we keep on blaming our situations or, or blaming other people for our failure to keep to the commandment of God does not matter the position that you are holding in the church, whether you are cleaning the church, whether you are a deacon, sacrificing whatever time, sacrificing your resources. If you do not keep to the commandment of God, if you do not obey God, know that you are just like so. Remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. It is my prayer this evening that all of us, should obey God. We must read the scriptures. We must trust God. He says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge God 
in everything that you do and he will direct your path. Don't fear. Don't tremble. God will take charge. May the Lord bless the reading and the teachings of this evening in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Thank you, we Lord, we once come before the throne of mercy and we are saying, you have spoken to us. We have heard for where we have sinned against you. We pray that we may forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and present us righteous before you. And we are willing to keep to your commandment. We just need your spirit to move along with us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.